It's time for another inspiring update from a past guest. This time it's Snotty Noses, yes, you heard right, Snotty Noses founder Laura Klein, who since we last spoke has sacked her distributor and implemented some very clever marketing. It's a Flemmy episode 542 of the 12-year-old award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Podcast. Well, I say welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of runny marketing. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You are infinitely more importantly, are a motivated business owner and you are well and truly ready. You are overdue, in fact, to create some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire that it absolutely deserves to be. And that, my friend, is exactly why this podcast exists. So if you love it, hit the subscribe button now on your favourite podcast app and you will never miss another episode. As per usual, team, There is marketing, G-O-L-D, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Righto, time for an update from a past guest who continues to smash it out of the park. I love these updates. Laura Klein first appeared on this show two years ago. At the time, She was the founder of Snotty Noses, a business doing a million dollars in turnover selling the battery-powered snot sucker, which is a device, it's a very simple device, that sucks the snot from the noses of newborns who can't blow their own nose. We all wanted one back then, right? Fast forward two years and business is booming for Laura thanks to a falling out with her distributor, which she wishes had happened earlier, and some very, very clever marketing. We cover plenty of ground here, including how to choose a manufacturer, Instagram videos, flash mobs, customer service tips, micro-influencers, blogging, EDMs, that would be electronic direct mails, reviews, loyalty programs. We even talk about fridge magnets. (laughs) The marketing world's gone mad. I started off by asking Laura about the fallout she had with her distributor. 2013 to 2019, that's me running Snotty Noses, selling the Snot Sucker online, a couple of other products as well, going great. But I was always selling other brands of Snot Suckers. We had two or three there, so sourcing them from other Australian distributors. And at the time, that was fine. I was a retail, online retail, and I was doing that. But what I quickly worked out was there was such proof of concept with this snot sucker. You know, with nearly a 1,000 babies born every day in Australia, my target market is never, ever running out. Even in the middle of a pandemic, people are having babies. So I just knew that I was onto something. And whilst I was happy with the product, we'd get customer feedback that would say, oh, geez, this one's really noisy. Or, geez, I wish it had a, a cover over the nozzle to keep it clean. And I'd just take all this feedback on board. And then it got to the point where I, you know, people said to me, Laura, you've got to go out on your own. Seriously, you can do this. Get your own design, get your own factory, get your own manufacturer, you can do it. And I thought, oh, maybe, maybe. Now, I was on your show literally two years ago and we were cruising. Yeah, we were going really, really well. And a week after your show, I was featured in the Sydney Morning Herald. So I'm just getting, you know, all this PR, which is just so lovely for a small business. And with that came some inquiry from pharmacies around Australia. Heard your podcast, saw you in the Sydney Morning Herald. We want this snot sucker in our pharmacy. Catch. I wasn't the distributor. My hands were tied. There was nothing I could do. I had to simply pass those golden inquiries onto the distributor. And that was difficult, even though I was talking to some of these pharmacies. The distributor found out that I talked a little bit to these pharmacies and didn't like it. And without going into gory details, I mean, it's not personal, it's just business, but they Laura, were pretty- Laura, you run, a, you run a business called Snotty Noses. You can go into gory details whenever you like. <laughs> Yeah, but it just fell apart really quickly. He's 
I'm not supplying any product to you. It's all done. Unless you sign a five-year contract to say you'll only supply our brand of snot sucker. And I thought, well, that's like asking a pub to stock one brand of beer and Bunnings to stock one brand of paint. So that's not going to happen. I'm not signing anything. And the relationship just dissolved so quickly. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm coming into winter and I've now got no stock holy heck. So I was pushed off the ledge and I had to find my parachute on the way down really, really quickly. Was that your train of thought? Did you literally go, okay, this distributor relationship is soured, I now have to manufacture my own product? Or was there a moment of in the corner, in the fetal position, sucking one's thumb? Yes. All of the above. Yes. How long did you suck your thumb for? Yeah, all of it. Uh, Good about on you. an hour and then I had a bottle of red wine and went, okay, I'm back. <laughs> I love yep. it. So no time to wallow, time to start researching. And f- so that was sort of April 2019. And from there ensued a worldwide research project on snot suckers uh, because there are a lot of brands out there in other countries and I have bought <laughs> so many samples. I've tried them all, all of these sorts of things, but none of them were exactly this thing I had in my head based on six years of customer feedback. I am the CEO of snot and I know exactly what works and exactly what doesn't work for babies trying to extract that yuck from their nose. So I just couldn't quite find it. And then I stumbled upon this beautiful medical factory in Taiwan. The people were lovely. They got me. I never went there, of course. This is all the joys of running a small business in the 2000s. It's via Skype. It's via email. It's via WhatsApp. And we just got this relationship going, bought a couple of prototypes, said, okay, I want to change this. Can we add this nozzle? Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we call it Snotty Boss? And they said, yes, Miss Laura a weekend and I said, right, I'm away. Let me understand that. You've looked all over the world at all the different versions of the battery-powered snot sucker. You've been looking at manufacturers in different countries of which you hadn't really established. There was no rapport when you were talking to them. You ju- it just wasn't clicking. This one in Taiwan, it just clicked. H- how? Is it? Was it just, that's just how it was? You managed the other person on the other end of the phone understood you had you was it a referral no it wasn't a referral no I found it I don't even think it was you know through the Alibaba channel or a Google search I think it was on one of those sort of medical research papers that come out each year reviewing different products and I found this factory name that I hadn't heard of before and I thought let me go and see what you know what they're doing and I have to preface that by saying you know when people start a business and they say oh I want to buy hats from China or backpacks from China or, you know, toys from China and get my own label on them and bring them into the country and sell them. That's easy. We are talking a registered medical device. So I bought samples off Alibaba of these snot suckers and I'd say to the factory, oh, do you have the certification that's required by Australian law? What we require in Australia is very different to what's required in other countries in terms of certification, testing, et cetera. And they would say, no, 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 we don't have that certificate. So straight away, a line through that factory, no can do. If they do not have the certification that meets Australian standards, that's the end of the conversation. This factory had it on the couple of different prototypes they had. I was then able to tweak the design, add different nozzles, you know, do a few different things. Before I press go on the production line, of course, I contacted TGA in Australia, which is sort of that pseudo government body that deals with medical devices in Australia for regulation. Tell me, um, from the moment you finally found this factory in Taiwan and in yourself said, these are the people that is going to, they're going to make my very own battery powered snot sucker to actually getting a shipment of ones that you could sell. I imagine there's prototypes going back and forth. What period of time are we talking? 10 months. 10 months. Do you mind if I ask what does that cost to design a product from scratch? Uh, it's a, it's a five-figure order, that yeah. is for sure. Okay. And how many times did you have to go back and forth with a prototype before signing off? Not too many, not too many, because wow. we weren't building it from scratch. They were an existing medical factory that had, they just did not do business yes. with anyone in Australia. So I was the first Australian to ever approach them and say, I would like Australian and New Zealand distributorship rights to this base product that you have, but I want to tweak it and change it a little bit, just minor sort of tweaks and changes and things. And a lot of that groundwork was already done. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, it does. Okay, so come March 2020, you've now got your own brand. It's called The Snotty Boss. Love the name. <laughs> you, did you toss around a few names and are you happy with what you landed on in Snotty Boss? Oh, I love it. Oh, I just think it personifies the product. It half personifies me. Like it's just <laughs> – and it's a bit of a just a ha-ha to yeah. say I did this. I just owned it and I wasn't going to let anything stop me and get in my way. I just had to figure it out. Can I also say that on reflection, I've done a lot of reflecting preparing for this interview, and it's actually really cathartic to sort of go back and document your journey of what you've done in the last two years and sort of go, oh, wow, that um, that was pretty all right, pulling that off while still, you know, running other aspects of the business, managing staff, managing three primary age school kids, so, and a husband and a dog thrown in. <laughs> You're a legend so far. So Snotty Boss arrives in March 2020. Great timing. It arrived, did it arrive on the same container boat as COVID or, or the one before it? And so COVID hits, what, oh, what did you have planned as a launch for Snotty oh. Boss and what ended up happening? Oh, we had a massive launch party planned at South Bank in Brisbane. We had a group of beautiful mothers with babies on their hips. We were going to do a flash mob. We'd done one before a couple of years ago and it was outrageous. We were on the news. It was all brilliant. And we went, that works so well again. And we were going to have people in inflatable green bouncy suits bouncing around South Bank while we were dancing. Like it was just going to be epic. It was going to be so good. And... That was due for the 30th of March and we all know what happened on the 22nd of March. The whole country shut down. (laughs) Home you stay. Oh, dear. Yeah, so no flash mobs in South Bank. No. What did you replace it with? Oh, we launched with an Instagram selfie video taken on my back deck with me talking into the video showing the product, saying, oh, wow, we're in lockdown, but this little baby is going to save your little baby and help them breathe and sleep better. It's live on the website now. Off you go. And, of course, I had sort of teased and sort of prepared my existing audience to say, guys, something massive is coming. Make sure you watch our Instagram stories on the 30th of March because it's going to launch. And so I built up all this sort of hype via my email list and Instagram, and we can talk about that sort of pre-launch type stuff that's really, really important. But, yeah, we launched it with an Instagram selfie video on my back deck. How fantastic. And, and you're away. So <laughs> so Snotty Nose as, as an online business has now got its own brand of battery-powered snot suckers called the Snotty Boss. You've also got 24 or so other products to help complimentary, complimentary products. products that help yeah. babies sleep like vaporizers and essential oils and meditation tapes and all that tapes, <laughs> meditation tapes. Yeah, the, the white noise, <laughs> those trusty white noise. Yes, machines. yeah. So you've got all that going and you've essentially, it's sort of been a bit of a relaunch of the business and it may be a relaunch of yourself as well as you sort of enter this new yeah. exciting phase, which I guess at the time you didn't realise the kind of success that was ahead of you and which I want to dissect with you now. Before you tell us about where you're at now and how you've got there, do you wish you'd manufactured earlier or did you need to go through the pain? Uh, It's the question that almost keeps me up at night. But what's in the past is in the past. I can't reverse back to 2015 and say, oh, I should have done it then instead of waiting till 2019. I didn't know what I didn't know back then in business. Uh, I have learned so much in the last five years. And also, as we mentioned before about the manufacturing costs, this is not a $500 order, team. We are talking serious capital investment, serious cash flow that you need to invest in this manufacturing. You've got to pay for it all before it leaves Taiwan shores and you haven't sold a single thing. So you need a buffer and, you know, a sustainable business model with cash flow to even be able to consider that or you would need to get investors or something like that. And I did, I nearly went down that path with a a lovely Medico uh, friend who's still a friend but decided that I can do this on my own. I'd I'd felt shackled by a distributor, so I wasn't going to then go and jump straight into another sort of relationship with an investor or someone like that. So, no, I don't think I could have done it in 2015, and I was too comfortable. I was in a comfort zone, and I fully admit that. When I got pushed off that ledge in 2019 with, sorry, there's no more stock for you, you're going to have to find something else, boy, did I scramble. Don't have to talk numbers if you don't want to, but having your own branded product versus bringing one in, someone else's in, how significantly different is the margin when you sell one? Oh, it doubles your profit. 
there, there's no question. Like, yeah, I mean, that's that's the number off the top of my head. But, geez, the bank balance, you know, the, the books look much, much nicer when you are buying, sourcing something direct from factory. Even though we're buying in US dollars, that was also fun in March. It's recovered a bit now, but, you know, that's just the way it goes. A, a game changer for business sustainability. The fun doesn't stop. You get the uh, the snotty boss to market in March. COVID comes along. That affects the wholesale pharmacy play that you had planned where you were going to use one of two agencies to help you get in front of 5,000 pharmacies. But no more fetal position for you. You rang or contacted the 5,000 pharmacies directly. Is that right? <laughs> Oh, nearly. We rang thousands. Myself, my niece who'd been laid off for COVID, I said, that's okay, Bella, you come and work in my office, darling. Get on that phone and just ring and ring and ring. And she did. And all we wanted was to make contact. She's never going to sell anything on that first call. That's like asking someone to marry you on the first date. We just wanted to introduce ourselves. We've got this brand new baby medical product. Can we email you some more information? And someone's email address is gold. Like it is some of the most valuable information you can ever have because you email them once, send them this, and then you follow up and you follow up and you follow up until they say, wow, this, you know, these videos that she's making and this content that's been created by her influencers on Instagram and this brand is really getting some traction. We might want this in our pharmacy. And so that's what, you know, when the two agents pulled out again, it's a business decision. We got on really well, but all their reps were off the road with COVID. They were struggling just to sell the existing pharmacy products into the pharmacies, unless you were hand sanitizer or um, masks. You know, it was really, really tough, even though pharmacy was a core business and still open. Everyone was just about, you know, hand sanitizer and, and all of that sort of stuff. I think there's a, there's a couple of lessons there. I, I love the fact that you reached out to these 5,000 pharmacies via email or, or phone calls simply to introduce yourself, not to sell. I mean, that's that's magic. And then it was all that follow-up, which it sounds like you're doing these little personalised videos on your iPhones, you're sending them fact sheets, you're just reminding them, you may be sending the bigger ones a sample product, but you're just slowly but surely, it's like the dripping, you know, the water dripping, you slowly break through at some point. But there's money in the follow-up. Absolutely. Say that again, there's money in the follow-up. Money in the follow-up. Oh, you just, you have to. You you know, almost to the point of being obnoxious and annoying, you just have to sort of, you know, tinkle in their inbox every couple of weeks. You know, and we were sending them stuff about, you know, the media that we got. We were in the, the Courier Mail and the Sunshine Coast Daily, so we'd send them that as proof. You know, we've got social proof. We got a massive article on Mum's Grapevine. We were sort of saying to them, this is the product that you want in your pharmacy. We are selling in record numbers. Now, again, COVID helped that. Winter helped that, winter of 2020, and that really helped us launch nicely. COVID particularly, people were shopping online, so a great time to be in an online pseudo-medical healthcare store for babies. Um, So that was great. Isn't it wonderful, the marketing landscape we live in, where as a small business owner like yourself, you can... You can look so much bigger, and as you say, just of just course. kind of what what was the word you used? Uh, tinkle, tinkle in their inbox. I don't tinkle know what a, I don't know what a tinkle looks like, but every now and then you just drop something in there, and you just like, gee, these people must be massive. And you know, when you are dealing with these buyers of at pharmacies, you know they they potentially are dealing with much bigger brands, but you're coming across that way. I think it's awesome. Laura, I, I love how you then go on to say that your marketing ecosystem was cranked up to a whole new level. It almost feels to me as you're talking and and reading the stuff that you've sent me previously, you'd found a whole new lease on a business that you were actually already loving. But it's like, my God, I've just opened a door to a room that's got so much opportunity and so much potential. And, and, And you say that ecosystem, there's not one magic bullet that leads to success. And this is, just before you tell us about that success and how you got there, just give us a sense of size of the business now. Let's start at the end. Uh, okay, so we've doubled our revenue in the last 12 months since, we, you know, we launched, we're 10 months into the launch of Snotty Boss. So that made for a, a doubling of our revenue, which is fantastic because we now have the wholesale arm going as well. So we're selling direct to customer via our 
website and then we've got you know that wholesale channel that just repeats and repeats they put in another order and then they sell those and then they put in another order so that's just a nice extra revenue stream having both the wholesale and the retail and the wholesale I mean they're helping us build our brand you know when we can say we're in Priceline Randwick and we're you know in Kempro in Burley I mean that just gives us you know social proof that this is a legitimate medical device it's a serious medical device that is going to help your baby breathe feed and sleep so yeah what was the question again sorry I've gone off track (laughs) (laughs) I love it Uh, the question is can you take a breath please I love it I love your excitement for your business it's absolutely fantastic. So so basically the, the ecosystem of marketing, there, like you're saying, there's not one magic bullet and there's, there's many things that you've got to put in place. Let's just work our way through them because there's some gold here. What you were doing was scoping the business. You doubled your revenue. Um, just quick, you've got about 25 products on the website. You've got a wholesale business. You've got a retail online business. What's the split between wholesaling to pharmacies and selling online for you? Oh, look, it's still only, or I'd still only say it's about 10% pharmacy and 90% direct to customer. So it shows you the opportunity that we've got to crank it this year. So we've just been putting all of these systems in place. We've got all their email addresses now. And coming into November, December last year, pharmacies just focus on Christmas and da 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 da. We're ready to crank up our contact with them in February, March, April. to send it to a whole new level. And I literally did an email to all of our pharmacy contacts about a week ago saying back to daycare germs are about to hit. Uh, Nearly a million kids are going back to daycare in the next couple of weeks after a summer holiday. And that means snotty noses, you know, despite all of this hand washing and sanitization and cleaning. If you're in a daycare centre, they are just little germicles. They're just festy germicles and they will get a snotty nose. Hey, if my chat with Snotty Noses founder Laura Klein is inspiring you to create some great marketing to grow that beautiful business of yours, and I really hope it is, then grab a copy of my marketing book, The Boomerang Effect. It'll show you how being helpful in your marketing returns you more customers and makes you more money. Thanks, by the way, to the 5,924 motivated business owners who've already bought it. Grab a signed copy over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Now, back to Laura. You've got 45,000 prospects, customers, pharmacists on your email database. What's your little secret? It sounds like what to, to email marketing. It sounds one is continue to feed them, tinkle their inbox with useful information. For you, it's research results, it's reminders of seasonality, it's... Social proof. Screenshot, social proof. Screenshot someone's story that they've posted for you for free, mind you. I love Instagram mums. They just post about it and they take such great photos and videos. Screenshot that and send it to your... So obviously we've got two lists on our email. We've got a wholesale list and we've got a retail director customer list and they get totally different types of emails, if that makes sense. And just helpful content, a special here. Uh, come and enter this giveaway here. Just, you know, change yeah, it up. Be helpful. And, and, and I, I imagine you're a lot more, you offer up a lot more helpful information than you do putting in requests to buy from me. Yeah, it's got to be a balance. Yeah, if you're just buy, 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 they're going to hit the unsubscribe button. It'll make your head spin how quick they'll do that. And I get that. Everyone's email inbox is chock a block. So you better make, you better have a good subject line to get their attention. And then when they click and open it, geez, you better have something good there to to tell them that might brighten their day or help them out or, you know, even some lovely visuals, anything. Are you writing the EDMs? Yep. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you can outsource lots of things in your business, but the, I know this business forwards, backwards and upside down. It's the heart and soul. And I hopefully, you know, when I talk and when I do an Instagram video or something like that, people can hear my passion. They know my experience. I am an early childhood teacher. I have dealt with my fair share of snotty noses yeah. um, over the years. I'm also a mum of three kids. So I have walked that walk and I know exactly where they are. That new mother with a three-month-old sick baby, I've been her. You're a great example of a business owner putting their face to the business. And I don't think enough do it. And I know that, you know, 
it can be scary and it can be daunting, but hey, you know, if you don't believe in your product or your service or your business, then who's going to? Was that something that you found hard from the start? Or you, you're quite the extrovert anyway, aren't you? So it doesn't... Yeah, I really am. I've got up in front of a, you know, a hall of a thousand students right. and, you know, done assemblies. It does, I love public speaking, all of that. Um, so that's easy, but you know, learning to do a good story and, you know, just have your face up close. I might, I may or may not put a filter on those Instagram <laughs> stories. Right. Oh, my gosh. I love filters and that's totally fine. But that's an art that I have tweaked and, and changed and I watch what other people do on stories. I follow so many businesses because they're great businesses. I just love to see what they do with their marketing. That's why I follow them on Instagram so I can see what sort of story they do. That's why I subscribe to their email list so I can see what they write. You know, I'm not copying it, you know, but it's just giving you an extra idea. I'm like, oh, that's a really, yeah, that's an interesting thing to talk about or, geez, you know, I wouldn't have thought of doing that, but that's great. That shows the customer exactly how you it fits together or how you wear it or like whatever business it is, clothing or hair care or skin lotion. I don't care. Just I can learn stuff from other businesses even though they are not in my category of baby medical at all. Let's keep working our way through these little magical things that you're doing in your marketing, micro-influencer marketing. You are into influencer marketing, but you're not really interested in, you know, the 50, 100, 150,000, you know, people influencers, micro-influencers. What is a micro-influencers? How are you getting to them? What are they doing for you? Yeah, micro-influencers on Instagram have between 3,000, 15,000, 20,000, up to about 25,000 followers. They're usually regular mums in Australia. They're not celebrities. They haven't been on a TV show. They don't have, you know, endorsements from here, there and everywhere. They're just regular mums doing their thing. They might have a particular interest in plant-based food for their kids or, I don't know, um, healthy skincare or, you know, they might do wild, crazy dances with their kids or have beautiful bedrooms, whatever. They are great. A lot of them approach me and just saying, look, I'd love to try your product and, you know, if it works for us, we'd love to put together some photos and videos and post about it. I'm like, sounds great. That sounds awesome. Uh, Obviously, I check where their following is from. If they've got 90% of their followers from the Ukraine, they may not be a legitimate Instagram business. But, you know, if they've got a mainly Australian following, female, uh, that's my target market. So I just send them a product. You send them a product, give them a little bit of a a note, a few key messages that they may or may not use. They go and talk about it and leave it up to them. Yep, and then leave it up to them. They do the creative. Yeah, that's right. And it's not so much that, you know, you don't get a massive hit from what they post and suddenly you get a million orders on your website. Like that just doesn't happen. Well, for me it doesn't happen. But what you get as well as that little bit of exposure, you get the content that lasts forever. You get the photo, you get the video, and you can repurpose that over and over again. The photos and videos go onto YouTube, go onto your website. You can reuse them in Facebook stories and Instagram stories. Like it just, you can put them in your email marketing. You know, there is just so much you can do with these beautiful photos and videos. And sometimes the videos are really real and raw. Just on that, it's really important to understand other business owners listening. Like, yeah, you just got a piece of content from one micro influencer you could run the risk of going okay i've seen that it's now been on instagram everyone else has seen it it's not the case it's brand new and repurposing it into a facebook story or into a blog post or into an email to a wholesaler that is awesome tell me social media wise so that's one way you're using social media effectively tell us about other ways both organic and paid uh, well, you know, the organic reach on Facebook, whoa, she's low. <laughs> I mean, it just, she is you know, low. I've got 42,000 followers on Facebook and I can do a post and 400 see it. Like it just. Demoralising. Pretty bad. Um, I get a lot more organic traction on Instagram and I tend to sort of run, I'm too busy and there's no point for me in making separate content for Insta and Facebook. I just pop both posts on both platforms and hope that, people see it. But you need to do that. You know, sometimes I go to a business Facebook page and they haven't put an organic post up since July 2020. And I'm like, "Um, are you still in business? Seriously. 
You have got to key, even if it's just once a fortnight, for goodness sake, put something up there so when a new customer checks you out on social, which they're going to do, it's almost like reading your resume, they go, oh, they just posted last week and that looks good and that. yeah, they must still be in business. If your stuff is old, God, why you even got a social media page? Sorry, I know that's harsh. It takes two minutes. Don't overthink it. Just post it. What are you posting organically? Oh, I post screenshots and, you know, content from my influencers. That's the main part. That's yeah. real and it's raw. I'll post a, you know, a, a video of me, you know, talking about a new product launch, you know, just like a minute version of it. Sometimes I'll just do a walk around in my office holding my phone like a selfie and showing people like, oh, this, you know, this is Amanda. She's packing today and Steph's doing this and Kelly's doing this. To me, that's completely boring. But to other people, they like a little bit of peek behind the curtain. They want to see what our packing area looks like and they want to see what our front office looks like and they want to see what our warehouse storeroom thing looks like. Okay, I'll show you. Totally, totally. Don't underestimate what people want to see around the business. Are you using Google AdWords effectively? Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, it is. It is the gift that keeps on giving. Really, because, and you, everyone, everyone knows this. When people are on Facebook and Instagram, they're there to look at cute pictures of dogs and see their friends and da 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 da. If I run an ad to Facebook or Insta, I am interrupting their feed and just trying to get their attention and get a click. They're not in buy mode. They're in let's look at friends and cute puppy mode. But when people are on Google, they already know that they are looking for something. They know the problem they have, their baby is sick, and they are like, oh, my God, how do I clear my baby's nose? And so they're in buy mode. Actually, they're in desperate buy mode because their baby hasn't slept all night. And that's where we are. So we have used a company in Sydney, a social media company in Sydney, who just set up our Google ads to get it humming. Does that happen overnight? No, but it does happen pretty quickly. You just got to get the right keywords, the right everything. It's a, it's a big back end and I'm not, I'm not an expert in that. I leave that to the experts. I pay them well for what they do because the return, we are talking ROAS of 20, a ROAS of 20, a ROAS of 30. So for every dollar you spend, you get 30 back. It is insane. Just, just so others know, uh, return on advertising spend is what ROAS is. And so for every dollar you spend on Google AdWords, you're getting 20 back. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That's a money tree. Yeah, it really – in saying that, though, you could go, oh, great, I'm going to spend $10,000 a day and get da 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 Well, there's a finite number of people also searching for your product on every, any given day because we target – you know, we're just – Australia. So our Google ads only service Australia. So we don't have the population base to probably sort of support a massive scaled ad spend. We've tested it. We've gone up, you know, from $500 a day on ads to $1,000 a day. And we've just, we found our sweet spot of where it sits. Didn't you get uh, international inquiry relatively quickly once you launched Snotty Noses and you do have... Yes. So what did you do there? Because obviously then you can be running AdWords overseas and, you know, the market is is that much bigger. So you're finding lots more dollar bills to make lots more $20 dollar bills. How, how are you servicing the, the international market? Yeah, so suddenly, you know, we've always been just AU and then suddenly in March, April last year, yeah, we started getting all these inquiries. Oh, do you send to... You know, England, you send to Canada. Uh, No, we don't. And this was just about the Snotty Boss. It really wasn't about any of the other products we sold. Um, It was just Snotty Boss. And I thought, oh, my God, like, this is crazy. I Surely I can just crank up some sort of, like, smaller side website to service international only because obviously with shipping stuff, you know, in shopping carts and checkouts online, you know, you got to get your shipping stuff right. So we knew we had to get a separate website that was going to facilitate overseas checkouts and shipping and cost and all of that sort of stuff. So it does have to run separately to the AU site, but it exists it's a one pager. I made it in a weekend and a half, did it myself, got it. It was just all templated. It's drag and drop, you know, do this, do that. And boom, hit the launch button and away we went. So that gave us another revenue stream. And we're still tweaking that to get it humming in terms of Google AdWords. And the great thing about that, when we're in summer and it's low snotty season, guess what the Northern Hemisphere is in? Snotty season. Season. So it just sort of, you know, said so that's going to, in in the next 
couple of years, that's going to start syncing up really, really nicely. Laura, you you said you set that page up in a weekend. I think that's awesome. It's like, you know, if it was me, I probably would have procrastinated for about six months to decide whether I should really do a landing page to attract international customers and all that kind of stuff. And clearly, you're an action taker. You're an extrovert. You're incredibly passionate about your product. What do you say to the business owners listening who are just finding the way you operate, I'll, I'll use the word overwhelming because it's just nonstop. Um, I mean, are you working 23 hours a day or are you just taking, you're giving each decision a little bit of thought and then rolling the dice on it in the hope that it'll work and if it doesn't, you either delete it or tweak it. Is that what you're doing? Absolutely. I am not working 23 hours a day. I work a solid seven-hour day and then I go back to my house and I'm with my kids and I'm with my husband and my dog and that's separate Um, because as business owners you could live on your phone 24 hours a day and that's scary because, you know, you'll lose contact with your kids, you'll get divorced from your husband, you know, like there's so much at stake here. What is the point of having a really successful business if it doesn't match my lifestyle? That's mental. Um, So I will never do that and it is about balance. I have a lot of energy and, and, you know, that's fine. Yes, I'm willing to try something. So sort of done and published is better than 100% perfect. Was that international website 100% perfect when I launched it in April last year? No, but did it function and it had, it still looked beautiful. And then I send the link to all my friends going, okay, what do you think about that? Give me the feedback. I've got too much text. Do I need more photos? What about a video? And we tweaked and we tweaked, but it stayed live the whole time. No one gets it right from the get-go. You should see the first flyer I ever made back in 2013. It's embarrassing. The first email I ever sent, oh, even more embarrassing, but I sent it and you have to start somewhere. It's a bit like when you have your first baby in those first four weeks. Is that your grandest moment of parenting? No. Do you learn as you go along? Yes. And you've just got to keep going. You just have to. Tell me, as an e-commerce business, the customer experience is pretty important, I'm guessing. The way the customer feels and is treated, you know, from the moment they come into contact to the purchase. You know, I remember talking to Kate Morris from Adore Beauty who talked about her, her biggest win is putting a bloody Tim Tam inside every package she sent. She said, that is incredible. The moment we'd stopped doing that, it, we, they, they threatened to do it on April Fool's Day a couple of years ago and got, you know, all yeah. hell broke loose. What's the customer experience <laughs> as a snottynose.com.au customer like? Well, hopefully lovely. And if you jump on our website and read the testimonials, it just warms my heart. Seriously, no one has to write a review but they do it just because they want to. And, oh, my gosh, that's so lovely. In saying that, we also ask them for a review. How many places do you shop at online and you never hear from them again? Really? Incredible. Like, Don't get me started. Do again. not get oh, me started. Sorry, the only time you hear from them, you bought two years ago and then the Black Friday sale comes up and they hit you with four emails in two days. Really? Where have you been for the last two years? You just want to Black Friday me? Oh, grr. Oh. It's incredible, isn't it? I, I've just moved into a new house recently where we had to do some not inexpensive renovations and, you know, new carpet, um, painting, all that kind of stuff. So you're spending thousands and thousands with each of these tradespeople or businesses. Do you know not one has followed me up? You know, the carpet people haven't followed me up saying, how's the carpet? You're happy with it? You know, the painters, are you happy with the paint? It's just, it's not happening. And I, I don't get that because maybe they're scared of bad news. But what if I said it was absolutely awesome can I refer you to others? Absolutely. It just is crazy. And word of mouth, we actually, you know, in the text message that you get the day your parcel's being delivered. So again, that costs us 15 cents to send that text message. It's all automated. Oh my God, we're not actually sending that, but it's all automated through our back end. And it says, hey, greetings from Laura and the Sonny Noses team. Your beautiful parcel is on the way. We hope you love it and tell all your friends about it. Boom, in a text. We're telling them what we want them to do. Please sit around and chat about us at your mother's group. We'd love that. So it's those little one percenters that just, you know, add up. I finish all my emails with an XX. I'm real. I'm Laura. I put the business phone number down the bottom. We are real people and you can contact us at any time. We are not, oh, what would I say? One of those faceless, big platforms that you couldn't actually speak to a real person if your life depended on it. 
you do seek reviews. You use a website called reviews.io, which I had a brief look at. How does that work for you? Yeah, it's uh, great. Yeah, it's not. It, we had another platform we changed about six months ago or something like that. Really easy migration. It's too easy. It just, it's all automated. 21 days after the customer purchases, they'll get an email with them. You've got to get your subject line right. <laughs> That's the, the most deliberated subject line ever. But it just talks about that. And, you know, thanks a million for opening this email. And gosh, we'd do a happy dance if you did a review. It helps new customers understand about our products. So that. And it takes like two clicks for them to do something. So they don't have to log in to leave a review. They don't have to do just give us some stars and write a sentence. And they do. And you also do something that I only thought the top end of town did, but you have a loyalty program using another crowd called smile.io. How do you reward loyalty? Uh, Just every dollar you spend, you get a point. And then when you get to 250 points, you cash it in for a $10 voucher. If you get to 500 points, you get a $20 voucher. If you get 800 points, you get $40 voucher, something like that. So, so simple. I didn't have it. And here we are, just a very quick story. Four years ago, maybe, you know, because we have a welcome code, you know, someone comes along for the first time. Yeah, we'll give you $10 off your first purchase. No worries. And this girl rang me and she was cranky. She's like, oh, I've shopped with you so many times and I keep seeing that you give this, you know, discount to what are the new customers? What about the old customers? And I went, "Um, actually, you are dead right. You are so right. I am so glad. I think the woman's name was Liana. Oh, my God, I am so glad. Thank you, Liana. Thank you, Liana, because negative feedback like that makes you just go, oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, my gosh, my beautiful, loyal customers, you bet I'll give you some points if you come back. You bet I'll throw another 100 points in your account if you recommend us, like, you know, like the shared link, you know, send a link to someone. It's all automated. Do it. That's marketing nirvana right there, which is a low cost to you, the business owner, high perceived value to the prospect or customer, and that gap in between is, is where the wow is. Yeah, absolutely. And do you know the best way to cheer up, you know, a potentially grumpy customer whose parcel arrived a little bit squished, not because it left our office squished, but because the, like the Australian Post guy hooked it from the front fence. The best way to placate someone with that or, oh, we sent the wrong oil or we did this, you know, there's a mistake. I'm so sorry. Let me add 200 bonus reward points to your account with us. Nice. Boom. You've just turned a really cranky customer who has a legitimate you know, complaint and grumble. I get that. No business is perfect. Mistakes happen. Boxes get squashed, etc. I will cheer you up and say, please take some, you know, we'd love to give you some reward points. It turns it on its head. And I love the fact that the boss of Snotty Nose has just used the word hoiked, which um, <laughs> didn't go unnoticed in my kind of, you know, messy brain. Tell me uh, you have a fridge magnet and tea bag trick. What on earth is that? Oh. This is my last bit of genius. This may have come from Kate Morris, actually. Oh. It's come, oh, I don't know. It's come from somewhere. Oh, because I do listen to like a billion podcasts. I love yours, love mm. it. But they're, oh, they've got, there's some gold out there. It's so good. So we print up, cost me about 10 cents to get through Vistaprint to get little business card size magnets printed up. It's bright green. It's got cute little, a cute little owl family on it and the owls are all sleeping on the tree and it's got a cute little quirky quote that says something like, getting lucky used to mean something different. Now it means the kids are asleep at the same time or, you know, something that every parent can relate to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the bottom, it's got snottynoses.com.au. What, we send it in every single parcel. What do I want the customer to do with that magnet? I want it to, them to put it on their fridge so when their mum friends come round for coffee dates and play dates and they're looking at the fridge getting the milk out for the cup of tea, they go, oh, that's a cute magnet. Oh, what's snottynoses.com.au? Boom, best marketing ever. Clever. Where's the tea bag come in? Oh, the tea bag. And it, so, the, again, in the parcel with a thank you card. Thank you so much for shopping with us. Cute little smiley baby on the front. And we attach an organic tea bag to the back. Cost me 10 cents for the tea bag. I actually get it off a beautiful small business called Maternity. We've got a bit of an arrangement. She gives it to me, you know, as a discount deal because I'm advertising her business as well. 10 cent tea bag. Thank you goes to every customer and people write a review. They go, oh, the snot sucker was great. Oh, the vapor was great. Geez, I loved that rosemary and raspberry tea that you sent. So they talk about the tea in the review and it's 10 cents. <laughs> Not hard, is it? Seriously. Oh, my gosh. It's a game changer. So it's like Kate with the 
Tim Tam, although I don't know how she prevents it from melting, but anyway. So for me, a, a cup of tea was just that perfect little, I hope you can take a moment in your busy day, mum or dad. You know, we've got a lot of dads buying snotty boss as well. Dads love a good gadget, love a good snot sucker. So dad, take have a cup of tea as well. And it is just, again, can I say how many parcels I get um, from here, there and everywhere? And I open the box and there's the product I ordered and nothing That's else. It. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Not a thank you card. Not even an invoice. My girl, my packing girls put a love heart and sign their name on the bottom of the invoice. Love Amanda. Love, love Steph. Oh, my God, we're real. <laughs> we are not a bot that's automated in some massive factory packing, you know, like someone from A to Z. Laura, I would love you to go and have one of those herbal teas. <laughs> you have been absolutely awesome. I think it's a great story. Are they, Thank oh, you. Yeah, you know, the minute I heard about what you were doing, uh, I thought this is a, a great story. And I'm so glad that you had a falling out with your distributor <laughs> and, you know, the shit hit the fan and you oh, had to start again. Every cloud has a silver lining. Absolutely it does. <laughs> and, and thank you for the positivity that you bring to the small business community in Australia. And oh. may, uh, may we get you on in two years' time because, you know, the business exploded. World domination. World domination of snot. I love it. Oh, and thank you, Tim. I absolutely love listening to your show every week. As I said, whether it's a hairdresser or a plumber or doesn't matter who you've got on, there is gold to be picked up just by listening to someone's story and putting it into action. So thank you for offering this platform for us all to learn from. It is genius. Laura, uh, for saying that, I will be putting 100 loyalty points into your account uh, immediately we hang up. <laughs> I love it. Laura Klein, snottynoses.com.au is where it all happens. Uh, go and hoik your way over there and you'll never look back. You'll have a good night's sleep, if you have a young child, that is, uh, forever and a day. Thanks, Laura. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Well, there you go, team. A well overdue and inspiring update from Snotty Noses founder Laura Klein. Here's what grabbed my attention from that chat with her. Attention grabber number one. I love Laura's attitude that what is in the past is in the past. You know, as business owners, it's too easy to get caught up when something negative impacts our precious baby, but it's those amongst us who quickly pick themselves up, dust themselves off and get on with things that win. Laura's a great example of this, as was past guest Jeremy Fleming, by the way, of Stage Kings, whose COVID-enforced pivot had him going from Australia's biggest stage constructor to a flat pack office furniture manufacturer in a matter of days. And you can check that very positive episode out. Uh, it's episode 527. I think you'll enjoy that. Attention grabber number two. I love how Laura called 5,000 pharmacies to introduce, not sell, to introduce her new range of self-branded products. And as she said, the money was in the follow-up, which she did so elegantly with an email follow-up every couple of weeks that also included some social proof. And I think the trick there was those email follow-ups, those EDMs, they were helpful. That's what my book's all about. Attention grabber number three. I love how Laura's using loyalty points to placate unhappy customers. Even the fact that she's got a loyalty program it's pretty impressive given we often think of those as the domain for big business. Now, if you'd like to become a ninja at dealing with grumpy customers, take a listen to my chat I had a few years ago with Jay Bayer, who's written the ultimate book on it called Hug Your Haters, and I'll include a link in the show notes to that interview over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 542. Well, that's what grabbed my attention. I would love to know what grabbed yours, or I just love to know what's on your marketing mind. So hit pause and tell me by calling the Small Business Big Marketing Hotline on plus six one, that's if you're overseas, 480-015-150. Just like Ted Carter of Edward Yucation did. <laughs> G'day, Timbo. It's Ted Carter. I want to say a big thank you because I've been listening to your podcast and you know, taking action on some of the inspirational ideas. I'm now on my way actually up to North Burnett, which is a place in Queensland, a region. The libraries up there have asked me to come by and do a whole bunch of uh, science and drones and uh, robotics workshops for kids within the North Burnett region. So it's a bit of a drive to get up there from Toowoomba, 
but uh, I'm really thrilled that things that I've been doing with boxing have led to this. You have been a part of that. So, Tim, I thank you very much, and uh, keep up the good work. Ted, you are a great bloke. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm around marketing, for your keenness to action, what you learn from this podcast, for entering the Monster Prize draw all those months ago, and for taking the time to let me know. Ted, you're a small business legend, and I really appreciate everything you do for the show. Thanks, brother. Next episode, we meet Shuffler's James Entra, who's changing the way businesses think about their most undervalued asset. Guess what it is? Plant and equipment? Nope. People? <laughs> no. It's their slide deck. <laughs> I know. You would never have guessed that. But he has good reason to think that, and he's going to show you how to make best use of it. Be sure to grab a copy of my marketing book, The Boomerang Effect, over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. If you've got something to tell me, give me a buzz. 0480 015 150. I would love to hear from you. I really do. Like, it makes my day when I hear from a listener. And even better, I can get to play your message on a future episode and give you a bit of free exposure. And I love doing that as well. Speaking of love, if you love the podcast, the Small Business Big Marketing Podcast, then you will find 541 more episodes. As has been the case for the past 12 years, this podcast is presented by me, Timbo Reed, and nailed together, nail by nail, by my wonderful producer, Dave Zulawinski. Sorry, Dave, for getting your name wrong last episode. I hope I got it right this time. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.